We're ending our time in Vancouver in a very Canadian way. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> We've mostly recovered from last night's eating extravaganza. Oh, it looks delicious. Ooh. Oh. And now we're kicking off our last day in Vancouver at Lynn Canyon Park. And there's a suspension bridge. And the even better part about this park is that it's totally free. So in Vancouver, there's a park called Capilano Suspension Bridge Park, and we had wanted to go for so long, but it's so expensive. So we finally went about a month ago doing a project for a company, and it was like a hundred Canadian dollars for both of us to go, which is crazy. We get there like 20 minutes before they open, and like the tour buses of people have already lined up. It's a madhouse. So we get there, the bridge that like the bridge I just walked on um, was completely packed. Like you had to squeeze past people. They have a bunch of other like attractions and stuff as well and it's a really cool place but it's just so crowded and we were like wow i don't know if we could ever spend a hundred dollars on this ever again so our little secret to vancouver is to come to lynn canyon um this bridge is totally free and there's trails you can walk around too and the bridge may not be like as long or as big as capilano they don't have all the like treetop adventure stuff as well but I mean, it's free and it's so beautiful and there's like a waterfall you can see when you look off the side of the bridge. So this place is becoming more popular. We're here like 7 a.m., which is a kind of when they open, I think, and no one's here. We have the whole bridge to ourselves. Um, so it might get busier later in the day because I know the secret's getting out, but highly recommend checking this out over Capilano. This place is funny for me because, well, Catherine will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, be careful if it's wet. Uh, we came last time, I don't remember when, but it was wet or like a tiny bit icy. It was and cold. Kona's afraid of bridges. So I was carrying her across the bridge and I slipped real bad. We like flew up in the air. I mean, in my mind, it was like in the movies where like you fly up and you're like, whoa, All your stuff and is. like, yeah, and everything's flying and we like landed on our backs. I don't know if it was that dramatic, but that's how it felt to me. And Kona was probably like, what the heck's going on now? I hate bridges even more. It was, it was really funny. We were both okay, yeah. thankfully. Yeah, it, um, it sounds <laughs> mean for me to laugh, but it I was laughed. pretty funny. <laughs> I laughed. It hurt a little bit, but I laughed. It was really funny. And, yeah. you know, Kona's probably traumatized now. So we didn't make her go across the bridge today. No. She went a little bit on her own, yeah. but we were like, well, let her do what she wants. And then we will just go around the bridge if we want to go explore other trails. <laughs> And now we are in the city. And behind me right here is the Olympic Cauldron from the 2010 Winter Games, which is really cool. So back when the Olympics were here, they like lit this thing up with fire. That would have been so cool to see. Another really cool thing about downtown Vancouver is that it's right on the water. So you can watch these seaplanes take off right from this like balcony right by the Olympic Cauldron. And the seaplanes are so cool. If you like small planes, which I don't love them, I highly recommend checking it out to see like, the city from above, the mountains, there's one actually, I think, like rearing up to go out right now, and we watched one a little bit ago fly away. So it's really cool. And there's also a floating gas station out on the water, either to fill up the planes or the boats, I'm not totally sure, but it's not every day you see a floating chaperone. So just a quick walk from the waterfront area is probably our favorite part of Vancouver called yeah. Gastown. Yeah, so Gastown was one of the first like downtown areas. And it's a funny story, it's named after a guy named Gassy Jack who started one of the first saloons here in Vancouver in the 1800s. Hence the name Gastown. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we love this area because like compared to the more like modern, like taller buildings that Vancouver has, it's just very old looking. The architecture is cool. I don't know if it's cobblestone's the right word, but like brick or cobblestone yeah. kind of streets. Yeah. So it's just really fun to walk around. Um, just has a lot of old charm to it. <laughs>
steam clock goes off once every hour. It does like a cool song. It's like, do, do, do. I don't know. <laughs> it's really cool. And so I was standing there waiting to film it to show you guys. And there was like a busload of tourists that had showed up also eating. And it never went off. And I felt really sad for them because I've seen it before, but maybe they've never seen it. So yeah. kind of a bummer. But it is still cool to see yeah. even when it's not playing the song. And yeah, it's like, it's like a weird little tourist attraction in Vancouver. Yeah. I don't really know I why. Mean, steam cool. clocks can take Sundays off too sometimes. Yeah, maybe maybe they <laughs> sleep on Sundays, which speaking of that, we are freaking tired. Yeah, I need coffee. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That no caffeine headaches. Yeah, caffeine. we're like kind of feeling a little groggy. Um, so we actually have an Instagram follower named Chelsea who lives in Vancouver who gave us a ton of recommendations leading up to this weekend. So we're going to go check out one of her coffee recommendations, which is Abade. Abade, Abade. I don't know. A U B A D E. We've never been. We don't know how to say it, but we hear it's a really cool coffee experience. So we learned it's pronounced obeyed, which is a French word that sort of means to the morning or of the morning. So we're having an awesome coffee experience here. I got a pour over, which is an African blend of three coffees. And we also got a flat white, which has the same roast in there. And the cool thing is he used a wine aerator, right? Yeah, is that right? I haven't seen that before. <laughs> yeah, a wine aerator. And so this one was not aerated and this one was. And by using the wine aerator, it brings out more of the flavor. So I'm curious to see if we can actually tell the difference. Yeah. So this is the unaerated one. Still delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and then here is the aerated. I've never had this before. Yeah, you can. Definitely tell the difference. I got the flat white and I became hooked on flat whites in the UK last summer and I'm really excited to try it. And so one thing to note is all the, the milk that he uses is vegan. It's a mixture of oat, coconut, rice, and hazelnut. He said mostly oat though, which is my favorite as well. So I'm really excited to try this. And it's the same coffee as the one that we got, like with the pour over. Oh, that's really good. That milk's really good. Yeah. He said he makes the milk himself yeah. and he like does it like to yeah. compliment the coffee. I mean, this guy's a genius. Know, He's so sure. knowledgeable. I'm pretty sure they, they don't have cashews on that. That's really good. It's not like overly sweet. It's just creamy. Mmm. Mmm. I love it. That was cool. <laughs> that was like one of the top like coffee experiences yeah. I think we've ever had. I've never had something like that. Yeah, like it's the smallest little spot. There's like four or five bar stools, and it's in an yeah. antique shop, which I think we forgot yeah. to mention, which also made it way cooler. Yeah. Um, yeah, just really cool. The owner just so 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 knowledgeable. Oh yeah. Told us tons of interesting stuff yeah. about coffee. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I keep thinking we're I don't know if we still said the name right earlier. He said there's multiple ways to say the name, so we're still not 100% sure like the real way. But I think it's like up to your interpretation. Yeah. But yeah, that was incredible. Um, highly recommend coming here. They are going to be moving at some point in the future, so uh, just keep an eye out and see where they will be um, because I don't want you to show up here and then they're not here anymore. Yeah. But yeah, highly recommend yeah, it. It's such a cool spot. The sign outside says it's a top 150 coffee shop by Lonely Planet yeah. in the world. Nuts. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so thank you, Chelsea. You just blew yeah. our coffee yeah, minds. <laughs> I've never had something like that before. That was cool. Yeah, speechless. <laughs> so if you're in Vancouver for a short period of time and you're like, what are the must-see, must-do things while I'm here? Well, one, I'd say Granville Island Public Market, which we went to two vlogs ago. And then I'd also say Stanley Park, which is where we are now. Yeah, this place is huge. It's 20% bigger than Central Park in New York City. So there's tons to see. You can walk. Yeah. You can uh, bring your own bike, rent a bike, yeah. something like that. And we rented bikes yeah. the first time and it was so much fun, but with Kona, we can't do that. So yeah. unfortunately today we're walking, but yeah, a lot to see, it's... a lot to do. It can take a long, it can take like a full day if you want it to, or you could ride a bike and it takes like an hour or two, but definitely come check this out. Yeah. There are a lot of awesome like city views, water views, mountain views. There's a beach. Yeah, beaches, it's awesome. So one 
the cool thing on the walk along the water of Stanley Park is the nine o'clock gun. As the name says, they shoot it off uh, every night at nine o'clock. It doesn't really say why, I'm guessing for like a sign of strength or something, but this cannon or gun was, was shipped over in the late 1800s from England. We've never heard it go off. Maybe one day uh, we'll come down here at yeah. nine o'clock just to hear it. Apparently it's very loud. Yes, lots of warning signs. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go all the way around the park, so we're gonna turn back here, but we are about to go check out that bridge a little bit closer. It's called Lionsgate Bridge. We drove over it earlier, you may have seen it, but it's this really cool like greenish blue color. So we're gonna go to a place called Prospect Park next to go get a closer look. So Prospect Point is this beautiful overlook, overlooking the North Vancouver area, the water, Lionsgate Bridge. It's a bit touristy, there tends to be a lot of people, but for good reason, it's awesome. They also have a restaurant and cafe if you get hungry and they have ice cream, but our favorite part is walking across the bridge. Ending our time in Vancouver in a very Canadian way. We got Poutine and Tim Hortons. What a Woo! day. I'm so excited <laughs> for this. Oh so, gosh. some background on the Poutine. We get at this place called Fritz European Fry House, and it's the only place we've ever really had Poutine. And the reason <clears throat> for that, Kona's so jealous. The reason for that is that it um, they have gluten free gravy, so I can actually have some, which is awesome. And it's a really tiny place. Don't expect to like sit there, it's more just like grab and go. But, oh man, I watched the lady so just like layer everything. So if you're not familiar with poutine, it's french fries, <laughs> cheese curds, um, and then gravy. And then we added pulled pork to the yeah, top. Yeah. So, hold Going on. in on this? I'm gonna let Kona have one so oh. she stops being loud. Um, yeah, it looks delicious. She was just like overflowing it. I almost got us larger ones, but I think this will be good. It'll be all right. The best part is like the cheese curds melt mm. from the hot gravy. Mmm. I'm so messy. That's so good. Oh, I know, Gona. No. Cheers. <laughs> Boom. So our time in Vancouver has officially come to an end. What a fun two oh, days. It was a blast. We had an awesome time. Yeah. If you missed any of the stuff we got up to, make sure to check out our PNW playlist. We have all the Vancouver vlogs on there. We just like, I guess growing up in Texas, we never thought about coming to Canada. Yeah. No one really talked about Vancouver. So for us, it just feels like a severely like underrated place to go. Yeah. And now living in the Pacific Northwest, people come here all the time. Um, and we just love it. We love it here so much and we can't wait to come back in the van. Yeah, I love it. I love all the parks in the city. That's just yeah, lots of cool. green spaces. I mean, spaces. there's lots of them in Seattle too, but I don't know. It's just really nice here and there's lots to do and lots of good food and mm -hmm. parks and stuff to see and I love it here. So we hope you enjoyed following along and seeing all the things we love about Vancouver. If you want to come here for yourself, we have a guide on our website with more ideas of things to do and places to eat. Um, coming up for us, we are going to Austin this week to work on the van together, which never happens. So we're really wow. excited. We're going to do an awesome Austin vlog too. So stay tuned for that. Mm. And then, yeah, it's pretty much just working on the van. And then we leave um, Seattle in about a month-ish to head down yep. to Texas to move into the van. Exciting. <laughs> so we'll see you then. Bye-bye. Oh. The water downtown. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, not the hiccups. Oh no. Ah, not the hiccups. Oh, no.